Go. No. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start the meeting. Uh, first meeting of November. We have. No, we didn't expect you. <laughs> yeah, we have two trustees. We have uh, fiscal officer who just walked out. We have road administrator. We have welcome guests. We have fourth estate visiting us tonight too. This is this is thank you. Welcome everyone. We have two sets of minutes to approve this evening. One is uh, minutes meeting. I guess they both are from October 21st, 2019. Is there a motion to uh, approve? I move to approve as hand corrected. Okay. I'll second that. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I then have uh, minutes from a special meeting October 31st, 2019. Is there a motion to approve those? I so move. I'll second that. Any further discussion regarding the, that special meeting minutes? <coughs> Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Uh, now, Entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount of $58,745.67. Broken down the general fund, $4,022.65. Fire fund, $18,524.72. Cemetery fund, $498.05. EMS billing fund, $7,840.46. And road bridge, $24,274.37. Uh, open capital project. Uh, $1,850.60. Is there a motion to approve? I so move. I will second that. Any further discussion regarding <coughs> any of those accounts? Well, by golly, there is one. Now that I thought about it. <coughs> we were presented a, um, a uh, warrant for a, a $1,850.60 for Bowser and Warner, Inc. And that was for work that was performed 10-8-19 um, uh, at uh, the new Township Fire location at 1001Z Avenue in Yellow Springs. And that, that invoice was $628. And it was accompanied by a, a very uh, detailed invoice of the work performed and the amount of uh, uh, the, the unit hour and mileage rate, and then we were uh, given another invoice in the amount of $1,222.60 for, let's say this is the Chipotle building at uh, 1551 U.S. Route 68 in Bell Fountain. Oh. Um, and there was a, a lot of work that was done there too. Uh, I guess they did a good job. I didn't get a chance to go up and see it. But, kind, but. For that, bill for that was quite yeah, generous of you, but yeah. so you're suggesting that they sent the wrong bill. Mm -hmm. I suggest they sent one anyway, and uh, we'll fix that. Good. So the, t the, the total of the uh, uh, fifty-eight seven forty-five sixty-seven would be minus a twelve twenty-two thirty. And that's in the capital project. Mm -hmm. 12, 12, 12, 60. 60. Yeah. All right, any, uh, any further discussion about the payments? Well, why don't we then summarize that is the total, instead of 58, 7, 4, 5, 67, would be what? Oh, whatever her calculator spits out when she. Yeah. But she, uh, 46, well, yeah, I can 5, it right now. 2, 3, 7. Okay. May we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Uh, let's see, correspondence for the period. Um, I'm going to do it the other way. <laughs> we have uh, a letter from our prosecuting attorney. Uh, requesting from Wright State uh, immediate payment in the amount of $63,648.04 for um, delinquent tax 
taxes that were uh, assessed to the property that Wright State sold us uh, in 2017, which we're building a firehouse on, and they conveniently uh, didn't tell us about a pending uh, pending determination for back taxes, and so we are. Requested payment of those taxes for the went forth. Plus, we got a determination letter for the same property from the Ohio Department of Taxation, which basically says uh, we will not be granted a tax exempt status on that property until that $63,000 uh, back taxes is paid. And we will be assessed an additional seventeen thousand dollars every six months until we pay the until we pay the off. So, oh, is that coming in? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess this would go with the fire department. We then uh, could, could I ask about that? Do sure. you have any sense of how this might get resolved? We're beginning to see well, big bucks. Uh, there's there's two ways, two three ways. Let's say we might get it resolved. One is uh, we'll Wright State will make that payment to the treasurer of uh, Green County, and so that will wipe the the, the back taxes off, and then we can make a new application for um, tax exempt status, and that'll go through the system, and then you know, we'll be happy. Um, or two. Um, We'll have to, uh, as they say, fight it out in court, you know, to make right state make that payment. Um, the problem is, as you can well imagine, that as we wait for all of that to work its way through the courts, and who knows how many appeals, then this tax bill just continues to accrue. And uh, you would assume that you know the, the courts would agree with us at some point. And Rice State would be uh, on the hook to pay all the back taxes at whatever point that would be. Um, we're, uh, yeah. I, I guess there's a outside possibility that, you know, and it doesn't even it doesn't reading this. See the the section of the Howard Advice Code is on the back of this letter that they sent, and it is. Very cut and dry, black and white. That that's the system that you pay the taxes before you before you get a chance to. Uh, and I really doubt that there's any wiggle room in there, but uh, but there might be a way that you know that we could explore that a little more in a little more depth. So um, so Steve Haller is going to pursue it at, that way, and uh, we might be able to pursue some other avenues. But in any event, uh, right states. Yeah, it's two different public entities. When you did the deed, did it say anything in the deed about taxes? Nothing. Uh, okay. And this was two months before the determination. All right. So there was nothing on the deed, there was nothing on the tax book. No, just sometimes on deeds it says who's mm -hmm. responsible to the taxes up to you know, the date of transfer or something. Yeah, oh, and it does say that. I mean, oh, it does know, say that. Yeah, right? State's responsible for them up to oh, okay. the date of transfer, and then we're right. so responsible after. So they're just being negligent, so to speak. Yeah, or, you know, <coughs> or saying hey, it's not our property anymore, you know? <laughs> okay. The taxes are due on it, it's the so property it's, owner. It seems to me that if you decide to go the course of trying to force Rice State to pay, you ought to just pay them and get reimbursed by Wright State if you're successful. Mm -hmm. Then all the, the fees don't accumulate. Yeah. And that would be the safest thing to do. Because the worst case scenario is you pay them anyway. Yeah. Some, some debate is that Wright State would be even less likely to pay. The Wright State is doesn't care, obviously. I mean, I don't know. The way I look at it, why would they be any less likely than they are now to pay? I mean, why aren't they paying now? they don't want to. It could be that this letter is sitting in somebody's inbox and no one knows it. Yeah. Okay, we well, do have the experience with yesterday. Wright State that it takes a while to get the right person to act. 
So I guess you could use that experience in purchasing the property to try to nudge the right state mm -hmm. rather than going through the courts. As you say, going through the courts is a long and tedious oh, we'll, process. We'll definitely go through through that right. method. Before if, we, if, yeah, the, if the, necessary. The going to court is the, you know, is the last resort, obviously. But yeah, I'm wondering, as I, as I said, when we tried to buy, when you all worked on buying the property, finally what made, made the purchase happen was the right person talking to the right person. And so it seems that maybe that's still the game that needs to be played now. Mm -hmm. Well, and it may not be someone just listening to this. Uh, there was a third party who said, hey, wait a minute. Why, why was this tax, tax exempt while Wright State was no longer using it for a tax exempt purpose? Mm -hmm. And so then they retroactively said it wasn't tax exempt. That is right. Well, so Wright State had been getting tax bills. Right. <laughs> they, they didn't knowingly hide this debt from us. Oh, but you could make the case that they knowingly did not disclose that there was a pending ruling from the tax commissioner. Oh, so the the, the challenge of the status was before they signed. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, yeah. well, no, they, yes, okay, I, I didn't realize that. Okay, anything else? <coughs> we'll move on. Um, I had some uh, conversation with a representative from uh, Bowser Warner, again, uh, who's doing our environmental site study, and she requested a little more information from the Green County EMA department, um, which I was able to get for her. What was what is that? Uh, the EMA emergency emergency management okay. um, management emergency management authority agency. Yeah. agency and uh, apparently they're the ones who uh, funneled through any environmental spills that happened uh, in, oh. in the county and actually funnel it through to Montgomery EMA who has the database of uh, oh. those so uh, that was the question from Green County did they have any anything on record for us. And it's got to go down. Um, we had the final final letter from Geopeer Corporation and the final, um, hope you can read that all right, <laughs> the final uh, uh, borings and, uh, and debts and times and all the rest of that and all were well within the standards. That, that is on the foundation, of, mm -hmm. or the underground of the foundation mm -hmm. of the new firehouse. Um, a reminder or a sign up application for the planning zone workshop on the 6th of December. Um, this is just the uh, handout that was given to us uh, at the uh, NCCJ National Conference of Community and Justice of Greater Dayton uh, dinner annual dinner that was uh, a, a table sponsored by MBRPC and uh, I was able to attend that um, last Tuesday. Does anybody know um, what NCCJ used to be? Not very long ago, but longer than my memory was. <laughs> no. Um, National Conference of Christians and Jews. back in the day. Um, there's a request from the Proclamation Department of Southland, South Lake, Texas, that we proclaim National School Choice Week uh, coming up January 26 to February 1. Uh, we'll have to take that into consideration. I, I usually don't like to do proclamations that are Outside of Green County, outside of Miami Township, outside the state of Ohio. Yeah, outside of the, you can just drop that. Right Eastern, Eastern part of the country. Um, senior notes from the Senior Citizen Center, from the uh, Montrose Group Rural Development Forum that I shared with all the members of the CDC. <laughs> um, 
copy of a letter to Josue Salomon, uh, manager of Village Yellow Springs, uh, requesting they uh, consider a waiver of all or part of the tap-in fees for the new fire department because it's a joint hug. Uh, grassroots clippings from the OTA. Um, Marshall Street, is that right? I'm trying to remember. Oh, this is the, that's right, this is the, the PUD application for um, the homing property behind us. And we have an invitation from homing somewhere in here to attend that, to attend that, uh, that planning commission meeting. Um, MVRP's five month for bi yearly equity newsletter. It's interesting. It has a picture of one of the attendees. The, the new uh, acting uh, chair? The new acting chair, that's correct. Um, which is you? Which is me. Um, here's a email from Eric uh, Henry, the Green County. Um, Economic Development Coordinator for Green County, and he needed uh, to have a report submitted by the end of October as to what we did with the uh, grant that was given to us by the commissioners in uh, was it February, January, February. And so I asked him to resend that report, and he did, and I filled it out and sent it in. And as you may remember, we earmarked that those funds to be uh, matching funds for the Clifton uh, Yellow Springs bike path connector, uh, of which on deposit on hold. Mm -hmm. So I haven't heard yet whether the Clean Ohio Fund has been uh, granted, uh, awarded to the to the connector or not. So we will find out. Uh, do, 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 do. Notice of commencement that was for the that was for the work on the fire station that got done. A uh, invitation from Kim Lehman of uh, MVRPC for the sustainability roundtable that will be held um, uh, Wednesday, December 4th at the MVRPC uh, headquarters. Um, November 1st, Green County Board of Health um, minutes, meeting minutes. Oh, here's the invitation from uh, I'll to attend the. November 12th hearing. Uh, information from Regional Planning on their last meeting. Ohio Cemetery Association uh, Spotlight Newsletter online. Uh, an invitation from the uh, Green County Department of Development for their second annual uh, Developers Breakfast to be held at December 11th at 8.30. Same place as last year, Holiday Inn. <coughs> Bless you. Um, a, a newsletter from the League of Women Voters of Greater Dayton area. Very timely since tomorrow's election day. And that, as they say, is that. Any further, um, any further correspondence in or out? This period? Hearing none. Um, with the fire chief's uh, permission, could we turn the floor over to our visitor for the evening? Of course. I'm sure, he has important information for all of us. He does have important information for all of us. I'll have four copies. So I'll formally one. introduce. This is Steve Ackley from the Ackley Insurance Group in Troy slash, slash Springfield, Ohio. And he's been our agent for. Uh, Health insurance for some time. Well, most of you have been through this kind of a renewal before, so. Well, okay. that air, it was all nice and brown. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wasn't here. November 1 is the, okay. or December 1, I'm sorry, is the official mm -hmm. renewal date for the insurance. So let me just kind of summarize real quick how we've been doing it for the last seven or eight years anyway. Um, 
the first first second page and the first printed page there. Uh, the, our benefits right now are with National General Benefit Solution. That's the name of the insurance company, and we've got kind of a hybrid solution to, to providing health benefits to the employees. And what we did is we went to National General and bought a higher deductible policy to protect the township against major catastrophic type expenses. And then and it was a $3,500 deductible. And that $3,500 deductible, we are self-insuring, the township is self-insuring that using a, a, a TPA out of Cincinnati called Claim Lens. And they split that $3,500 deductible between the employee and the township. So the, the first couple pages there, or the first two or three pages then, just kind of give you the highlights of the National General Plan, or the National, yeah, the National General Benefit Solution Plan. Um, $3,500 deductible, it's a $35 office visit. Uh, there's, there's drug co-pays for drug cards, and co-pays for urgent vis care visits, and emergency care, and things like that. Then the, uh, would be, I guess, about the fourth page in, is the actual schedule of benefits that the employees have. And they have a $250 deductible, and this is what we get through claim links. We're buying back that deductible and self-insuring that. So we have a $250 deductible for the employees. Once that $250 deductible is met, then it goes into a 50-50 sharing arrangement where the township pays half the bill and the employee pays half the bill. We keep doing that until the employee gets to a $1,500 out-of-pocket maximum. Well, if we're splitting it 50-50, then obviously the township's gotten $1,500 too. So that, that takes us to $1,500, another $1,500 is $3,000, plus your $250 deductible is $3,250. Then the township would pick up the remaining $250 of that $3,500 deductible. So the township's liability is $1,750, the employee's liability is $1,750 with a deductible plus the home insurance. Um, and that's the way we've been doing it for several years. Over the years, Claim Links does a pretty good job, but over the years, the rates have continued to creep up a little bit. Um, so it's become more of a factor. And when we look at this arrangement, whether or not we want to continue to do this. And my suggestion is that, yes, we continue to do this for at least another year, but we're going to need to change insurance companies from National General, General Benefit Solution, and I'm going to suggest that we change it to Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Um, if you flip to the maybe the, about the fifth or sixth page back, uh, it'll it's a table that looks like this, and that will be actually the renewal. You've got it there, Mark. That's the actual the renewal summary from National General Benefits. Let's find it. Yeah. Okay. Um, it says we recently notified. Yeah, we recently notified you. Um, and you'll see on the, skip all the way over to the right hand side, column seven, your current rate right now on a monthly basis is 53.05. And you'll see what they want to jump it to next year, starting November 1 to 92.79. That's a 75% increase. That's per month. That's per month, mm -hmm. correct. Um, in my conversations with them, that was being driven by some potential claims, which those claims have come and gone. There was a pregnancy, and they were concerned about that. Um, their concern was the baby would not come before the renewal, and so they had kind of an unknown claim. You know, could, babies could be extremely. It's not expensive. insurance; it's selling medical care. Um, just for instance, I have a grandson that was born, he's four years old now, his, at childbirth, his claim is almost $2 million. So that can really put a hole in an insurance company's yeah. budget if they don't. So that's why in pregnancies, you know, are something they really have to take a look at. Um, I have, have gone back to them and asked them to reconsider that, and they said they are willing to reconsider it, but it's still going to be down around a 20% renewal. And I, Anthem's giving us a better quote. So bottom line, I'm going to still recommend that we switch over to Anthem. Um, one nice thing about National General, that in the years past, they have, the, of, of that $5,305 that you're paying, they split that up into three different pots, so to say. One pot is for the administration expenses for the company to administer this whole thing. The second pot was for them to buy catastrophic stop-loss insurance to protect the plan, and then the third pot was to make claims out of. 
Well, that money that's going into that pot, at the end of every year, if you haven't used that pot full of money, then they give you back. And so the last quite a few years, you guys have gotten a pretty nice refund back. Mm -hmm. I believe this last year it was around $8,000, 8500 something like that. And the year before, I think it was $78,000. So um, when we leave National General, Anthem does not do that. Anthem gives you a fee going in up front, and that's the fee is the fee. If they make money, that's what they're trying to do. If, if they lose money, they, they, they absorb it. Um, the other part of this, the, the monthly cost that we have, we got the, the last year we had this 5305, which was our, our fee to National General. But then you also had your claim links fee, which was the tip, the third party administrator out of Columbus, or out of Cincinnati. Um, they are up to a $300 a month administration fee. So there's a, just a flat $300 every month, whether you have any claims or not, just for them to, to administer the thing. And then your claims so far up until the pregnancy, and I have not got those numbers yet, but up until the pregnancy, your claims had, had cost you guys about $60 a month average of what the township was reimbursing. So it was, again, a really good year outside the pregnancy. <coughs> What's that? Those darn pregnant people. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's just part of life. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's why we have a big part of life. Honestly. No pregnancy, no life. Um, okay, if you flip, flip, flip past that gray, that first crazy binder, um, one of the first pieces of legislation that, that President Trump signed into law when he took over was a piece of legislation that allowed associations to offer insurance to their members. So if you guys are members of, and I'm making this up because I don't know, but I'm some, some kind of a firefighters association, you, that association could go together and put an insurance plan together for all of its members, maybe 10, 15, 20,000 members, and then take that block of people and go to the insurance company and say, we've got a group of 20,000 people we want you to give us a quote on rather than you guys going individually and saying, we've got a group of seven or eight people you want us to give us a quote on. So uh, those, those type of plans are called multiple employer welfare arrangements. Uh, it's, a, it's a great concept. Uh, they're just, they were prohibited for many, many years, but, but they got signed into to law once, or just, you know, last two or three years. One of the first organizations to jump on board onto that thing was the Chamber of Commerce. And it was actually that here in Ohio, it was the Southern Ohio Chamber of Commerce down in Cincinnati that, that first jumped on board this. It's expensive to get it set up. They had to have $500,000 in cash on hand to, to set aside into an untouchable fund in order for the state to even give them permission to proceed. So it, it's expensive, and that's why a lot of associations don't do it, because they don't have the money or the expertise to set it up. The chamber did it about three years ago, and they've been running very successfully with it for the last three years. Um, to, to get into it, you have to be a member of the chamber. And I talked to Chris this last week. He tells me that you guys, the, the township is a member of the Yellow Springs Chamber, and the Yellow Springs Chamber is a member of the Greater Southern Ohio Chamber Alliance. So uh, we're good there. So I went to Anthem and asked them to give us a quote. And I apologize that I, I didn't have time to get a cleaner quote to put in there for you, but it'll be this one that went out of my yellow sticky thing down here. It'll be the one with the big X in there. Mm -hmm. um, when I ask the insurance companies to quote me, they send me quotes on all 50 of their plans that they make available. So I have to kind of sort through and pick out the ones that, you know, that I want. So I've tried to cross off and highlight the one that, that we're looking at here. I, what I've tried to do is match up as close as I can to the current benefit plan the National Journal of Benefits was, was given to us. So that's that option number two on that chart. And so we're, we're looking at a $3,500 deductible plan uh, from Anthem, same as what you have right now. The um, total out-of-pocket expense, which is, is how much the Expenses have to be incurred before the plan will pay 100% of everything. So right right now, you've got a $3,500 deductible, and then it goes to 100% coverage after your deductible for everything except for your office co-pays and your drug co-pays. And so that's, Anthem's doing that the same way, 
but you still have your co-pays. And so they have to put in some kind of an out-of-pocket max that says after all your deductibles and all your co-pays, everything, the most any employee could ever have to spend under that plan is going to be that maximum out-of-pocket. So that's what you're going to see as you go down this column. The first one is your network deductible, your in-network deductible. The next one is your out-of-network deductible. Then you've got your out-of-network, out-of-pocket expense, or your in-network, out-of-pocket expenses, which is the $5,500. And just as a point of comparison, the National General is seven hundred and fifty, so this is a better, you know, lower out-of-pocket. Um, and you've got your out-of-pocket, uh, out-of-network, out-of-pocket expenses. And then you've got your office visits. Uh, with Anthem, it's a $30 office visit. Under your Claim Links plan, it's a $35. So this is actually a little bit cheaper, $5 cheaper office visits. But for specialists, Anthem's is a $60 copay. And right now, under Plain Links, your specialist is, is a $50 uh, office visit. And my suggestion is going to be, because Plain Links is getting expensive to administer, that we look at just adopting what Anthem's copay arrangements are leaving it at that. So instead of having a 30, a 30 and a 50, you just have a 30 and a 60. Because your, your primary care physician is going down $10, and the specialist will go up $10. Um, emergency rooms right now, um, Claim Links is buying that back to a $50 emergency room. Anthem charges a $400 copayment if you use the emergency room. That is the biggest expense nationwide and statewide. That's the biggest driver of expenses in any insurance plan is your emergency room business where people will use an emergency room as an urgent care facility or as a primary care physician facility. I don't think there's been any abuses in here. I haven't seen that come through, but I would still suggest that that's an area you might want to look at changing because right now a $50 deductible is really no incentive not to use a doctor, you know, it, it only costs you 50 bucks to go to an emergency room, mm -hmm. why, you know, why go anyplace else? So I would suggest adopting that $400 that, that Anthem puts in there as the co-payment. I think all our folks don't want to spend any more time in an emergency room than they do <coughs> the they do already. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't imagine that's a big problem. Oh, yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah, certainly, but yeah. Well, you, like I said, I looked at your claims, and, and there has not been an abuse of that amongst the group. But I just think well, if you're tightening, if we're changing everything and tightening things up, that that's an area that you probably should tighten up a little bit on. Yeah. Just for the future. I mean, I know my guys see the problem every day, so yeah. they do whatever they can not to go to the yard. So. Yeah. And we do have good urgent care facilities nearby. So yeah. that's, so that's the same charge if you go your own or your home. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same either way. Yes. Yeah. Um, hmm. Everything else is pretty much the, the same as what you have right now. Because um, claim links really isn't changing. So, I mean, I say it's pretty much it's identical. I mean, claim links is going to be the governing doctor and the doc document that, that says how we pay claims. So other than those couple areas that I suggested, which would be the specialist in the emergency room, everything else will stay the same. Uh, Cost-wise, if you flip to... Come here real quick. The pharmacy... Oh, is, uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. My note was starting <coughs> there. Okay, yeah. Um, pharmacy right now, you have what they call a 20, 50, 75 copay. So you have $20 for generic, $50 for a preferred name brand drug, and then $75 for a non-preferred name brand drug. This one's going to be a 15, so instead of 20, it'll be a $15 copay. Instead of a $45 preferred, or instead of a $50 preferred, it drops to a 45. And then instead of uh, a $75, this one will be an 80 for a non-preferred drugs. Your non-preferred drugs are going to be the ones you typically see advertised on TV, the, the newest ones that are out. Uh, so if you're using generic or preferred drugs, your, your costs are going to go down. If you're using a non-preferred name brand drug, your costs will go up by $5. And again, that's with Anthem. 
if you keep your claim links document the same as it is right now, claim links is buying that preferred back to 75. So that's another area that you might want to look at changing if you want to. Okay, any other questions on that page? I'm not entirely following. Uh, we go with Anthem. We're still using claim links for our to oversee our shared correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah, all we're doing really is replacing National General with Anthem. Um, National General uses Aetna as their network provider. So to be a network, you have to use an Aetna physician. Obviously, Anthem would use the Anthem physicians. Anthem's statewide network is, is a little bit broader. There's more doctors in the Anthem network than there's the Aetna network. So I don't think anybody's going to have any problem in this area with that. In our area, do you know, do they use both Premier and Kettering? As of right now, yes, they do. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. change all the time. They change all the time, but yeah. Right now, yeah. All right. Are doctors doing the same thing? Or can we stay with the same doctor? You play? shouldn't be able to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I don't know who any of the doctors are that you guys are using, so I couldn't check that for you ahead of time, but um, there shouldn't be any problem. So, uh, if you flip the next page, it will give you the, uh, the monthly costs. Um, the total rate's going to be a little bit wrong there, but but we're comparing apples to apples. So these the census that's showing there with the with the family statuses and all that is identical to what your national general renewal was. So we're looking at the ninety. What was that? Hundred the ninety five hundred dollar number. Yeah, the 9279, which is the National General Renewal number, we're comparing that to the 37, 3379 number with Anthem, so a significant difference. And even if you compared it to last year's premium, right now the township's paying 5305, and Anthem's coming in at 3379, so significant savings even though it was last year. Um, now, like I say, these numbers are going to be a little bit, a little bit off because uh, the employee that just had the baby, he still, when I rated all this, I rated him as just an employee and a spouse coverage, so the baby's not been added on here yet. So that total number's going to come up some. Mm -hmm. But this is the same way that everybody else was rating it, so we're looking apples to apples to, to compare it. So. so any questions on any of the, the medical stuff so far up to that point? Okay, the next page is the Southern Ohio Chamber Alliance um, participating business acknowledgement. There's one thing I want to point out in paragraph two. The chamber charges a fee, in, in addition to having to be a member of the chamber, the chamber charges a fee to administer this whole thing. So built into this cost, or, or not actually in addition to that cost that we just looked at, the chamber is going to charge you one time per year Forty-eight dollars for every employee that you have. So you've got seven employees on the plan. So you'd be charged. You'd, you'd get a bill for three hundred thirty-six dollars at some point in time throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Just a one-time fee to pay the chamber to administer this whole thing for you. I'm expecting hearing. Fiscal officer get ten percent of everything. <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're being reported. Yeah, it's only been one percent expired by now. It is zero percent. Okay, so that's my recommendation on the medical. The last page is dental. Um, we are we're with Superior Dental on the, the dental insurance, and they've given us another very good renewal. The rates have stayed identical to what they were last year. No changes in benefits. So, my recommendation is with Superior that we stay there. We've got other companies that we can use, Delta and, and a couple others, but Superior's got one of the broadest networks of dentists in this area, and the rates are going to be so. so those are my recommendations, that, that we switch the underlying insurance over to Anthem, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and that you renew with Superior for another year. I'd entertain a motion to uh, accept Steve's recommendations. I so move. Mr. Hollister moves. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote please. 
Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. You guys can decide amongst yourself what you want to do with the plain links mm -hmm. changes that I've recommended. Okay. Um, I, I mentioned to Chris ahead of time that there, this anthem thing is has about at least 50, maybe 75 pages worth of documents to sign on it. So I will get back with Chris at a later date and we'll lock down what you guys all have to see and wait for me to fumble through the pages and find all the places that the sign and point. So I'll take care, care of that next week. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Any other questions for me from anybody? I didn't understand how the, is the Chamber of Commerce influencing what's happening or not? This year, uh, define influencing. What do you mean? By well, that? Our, I mean, you you said that they are we are we going to be a part of that pool, yes. and that makes you are that's part of what the race. Yeah, so you will have to stay a member of the Yellow Springs okay. Chamber. I promise. But the Yellow Springs Chamber isn't the one. No, no, it's, it's, a, it's, it's the large I understand. It's just southwest, southwest yeah. southwestern yeah. Ohio. But yeah, they have a whole. Whole subsidiary organization set up down in Cincinnati that's administering this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But that, how, how is that changing the rates? Because when Anthem is giving us quotes and everything, they're quoting Miami Township okay. as a 50,000 person group. I got that. Rather than okay. a seven person so, group. But now, you're the previous carrier, were they quoting based on the? No, they were no. quoting. They they are not part of that township or, they, or part of that chamber. Oh, wow. okay. So there, that started out with a partnership with Anthem. An Anthem kicked in a bunch of money to the chamber to help them meet their I, requirements I to get started. So that's only available that way. Correct. Although this year United Health, they've asked United Healthcare to come into the chamber as well. And last year they invited Medical Mutual to come in. So now there are three companies that. Are participating in this chamber product. But those are the only three. So there's companies. some competition. Yeah, there. I had all three companies quote it, and Anthem's came in with the best overall rate, three best. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yeah. <coughs> all right. We shall move along. Chief, I believe you were. I would like to send this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, since the last board meeting, we've had 35 EMS incidents. Three of which went back to the 19 fire incidents. Four of which went back to the <laughs> uh, That is not correct. No. We did six fire safety inspections, not 26. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, good. Um, uh, I forgot to put on there, in case anyone was wondering, you we weren't, uh, when the BP had their tanks full, the mystery tanks, their orphan tanks full, uh, they have received their tests back and everything was clear, no contamination, you know, so uh, perfect, which was what Danny expected and was very good for tennis and day. So, yeah. Very good. <laughs> um, staffing, uh, Captain Ayers returned to work on Sunday. And uh, was greeted with several complex emergency calls. That's what he gets. Five days off. That's right. Five shows off. Uh, and then Alex and his uh, wife, Caitlin, had their baby uh, on the 27th. Cecilia and Lane. Um, and I, on that topic, I need to request an executive session for matters of personnel. Okay. You want it now or after? Any, any uh, whatever works. Yeah, well, that's fine. So we yeah. brought it up. <laughs> It'll be quick. I move so that we go in into an executive session. The purpose of personnel. You have to be more specific. Personnel leave. Okay. How's that? All right. Okay. Is okay. there a second? I second. <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> You're me. We'll get it together. <clears throat> All right. We will reconvene public session at roughly six forty-eight. And Mr. Hollister will make a motion as a result of the executive session <coughs> work that uh, we <coughs> authorize a an NML FMLA Family Medical Leave Act uh, 
leave. leave for Alex went for up to two weeks, uh, which would be basically starting November. from November 16 through the month uh, because of early birth of his and, and medical complications of his child. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding that motion? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Reacher? Yes. Thank you very much. And the one. Yes. Uh, the only other thing I put on there is, you know, you guys hear things. Uh, a couple incidents we've had, basically just a roundup of those. Uh, the lost person search for Peg Champagne. Uh, just a little detail in there. Uh, there was a vehicle crash on West High Road on October 27th. Uh, the patient was care flighted uh, to $200 hospital for from. And uh, yesterday, <laughs> the welcome day back, um, they had a, uh, a hay fire on Fairfield, 150 bales of hay wow. on fire on a trailer. Um, on the trailer? On the trailer. Did they catch fire? So it was a spontaneous well, combustion? They, the theory actually is they had a tarp over the, the hay in the wagon, but it was flopping. And they think that it was rubbing against the tires, which caused friction and heat, which is the hay. Or ignited the tarp. And yeah. Mm. How much water did they have to well, throw that? Uh, they went through two tankers. Our tanker, or well, whatever, the Bath Township tanker, which is like 20, 18, uh, 2,000 gallons, 2,100 gallons, and then Zia Township's tanker, so, yeah. which is about the same. So. How does this work? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it all worked out. It was They were out there for two hours. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, County Road Department, or Highway, whatever they call it, so it's Highway oh. Department, came out. And, I'll push it all off the road because it was on the road. It's uh, on Fairfield. Fairfield between Snip and Curl. 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 Carol. Curl. 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 Um, well, yeah, yeah, sometimes that hay will burn forever. And you got to get in there and break it up. Yes, and that's what they basically have to do is yeah. kind of get in there. Luckily, it was bales. Oh, it was? And not the big rolls oh, because yeah. those are a nightmare and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they do hay. I mean, still do that. Yeah, yeah, they, they do them all different yeah. ways. Yeah, uh, the rolls are a pain. Yeah, but you can actually unsnip them and then unroll them, unroll them which is yeah. nice. Not, however, as one of my trainees once thought was a good idea, use a chainsaw <laughs> to get into the... <laughs> oh, that gunk up everything. Oh, yeah, remember, remember that chain takes things back into <laughs> the... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember actually bring that chainsaw to John Finn, who said, between cigarette pumps, what kind of idiot did this? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me, John. <laughs> so anyway, um, thanks to everyone who helped us out. Uh, the lost person search has an impressive list of everyone who came to help search for, uh, Man, search for her. Man, so, amazing amount of uh, folks who... Yeah, we have a heck of a res response to that, which was really nice. So, um, And actually, on two out of the three incidents, the you know, city came up and uh, helped us out with one, one well, the first one, two of their drones. So, mm -hmm. one of Xenia City, not Xenia Town. Yeah, Xenia City came up on the lost person search. Um, both mm -hmm. police and fire, they both have drones with infrared capability. Um, and then on the vehicle crash, there was a thought that the guy was saying, I mean, he was a little out of it, but was saying there was another patient. So they spent, after the, the helicopter took off, they spent about an hour with the troopers and the drone checking mm -hmm. the whole area to make sure there was no oh, somebody hadn't wandered off. Yeah, or was ejected or something. Yeah. But, um, turned out, I mean, unless they were really ejected, <laughs> 12,000 feet or something. Uh, there was no one there, so that was good. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, it's nice that Zinga has got those drones, um, but we have one now, so watch out Zinga. So Darcy doesn't have infrared capability. Jeremy's very upset, but <laughs> I told him he'd have to deal for now. <laughs> So we can do daylight searches. But. Mm. So there you go. We also, for the Peg Champion thing, also had a helicopter from State Patrol. Mm -hmm. like Air mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's us. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to take this opportunity tonight. Uh, uh, Mark couldn't join us, but hopefully he'll be back soon. But uh, I think it's time that we adopt the uh, resolution of necessity one of the forms from the county uh, that's required to get on the ballot. Uh, the ballot for the primary is going to be held March 3rd, 2020. 
to <clears throat> uh, put a renewal for our 3.8 mil levy that's uh, currently in uh, in force, as it were, and. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything new in this. Uh, it's for five years, the same way ours is now. It's for the tax years 2020 to 2024. Um, and that's for fire. For, yes. Fire and rescue. Continuing operation of Miami Township Fire and EMS Service. This is uh, resolution 2019-44. Yeah, I'd entertain a motion for adoption of this resolution. I move that we uh, put the 3.8 mil renewal levy on the ballot. Um, I just want to make sure that we understand this is a resolution that requests the certification from the county auditor pursuant to a high revised code section 570503. And basically what it's doing is we're asking David Graham, the auditor, to certify that Miami Township has the Financial wherewithal, the the value in the the uh, all the property that's being taxed in order to fund this levy for five years out. So that's what this is. This so you needed this, is the, this isn't there. So this is. Should I reword this? Nope. Okay. Yep. You got it. It's just this is the first of, of three steps. Uh, resolution of necessity, and it'll come back, and then we'll have a resolution to proceed. Okay, then. And then we have to have formal yeah. legal ballot language. So I am I'm moving adoption of resolution of necessity mm -hmm. for our 3.8 mil mm -hmm. renewal levy. 2019-44. Okay, I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. This is the original uh, copy. Thank you. We appreciate the uh, continued funding. <laughs> well, everyone's so got to be on the front. front. Yeah. Yeah. Has a fire, we'll appreciate it. It's a renewal, so we actually and we uh, contacted David Graham about what a replacement mm -hmm. would be doing that. for eight percent more income. Mm -hmm. It would cost homeowners like twenty three and a half percent more. Income. Yeah, I don't know. We we talked about that. That's the <laughs> Shazam. That, yeah, that's the real conundrum of. Of renewals versus replacement. Yeah. That's, so I'm glad we're able to uh, uh, go into this as a renewal and not have to uh, ask our, uh, especially hard hit, the agricultural and, and basic residential food. Uh, yeah, those are the two who would get it. Yeah. Big time. So. Okay, anything else? Tallinn? Nada? Okay. <laughs> new, the new firehouse report. Uh, okay. Have we voted on that? Did we vote on that? Margaret? Yeah. I don't, yeah. Really, I, think, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I said your names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, she did. Okay. It's official. Mm -hmm. New firehouse report. Um, the only thing I have is the pad is ready, uh, staked out, uh, nice and flat, um, <laughs> ready to put in uh, foundations perhaps this week, towards the end of the week. We'll have a uh, meeting on Thursday and things may be moving along by then, so I'm not positive, but that's the next step. Uh, after that, there'll be uh, the sanitary and the, um, the stormwater <coughs> lines will be put in. Um, I, think that just, I stopped by there uh, the late morning and there was one fellow who was scattering uh, a gravel pile and he saw me and he sort of came at me with a, with a, with a bobcat and like I, like, like I wanted to talk to him and I had to wave. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, well, it was coming at you with a bobcat. Yeah. That's the prevailing wage coordinator. Get him. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it out alive. Yeah. Um, anything else? All right, let's move to the uh, cemetery road and yeah. our sextants here this evening. Yes. Well, we had three burials since the last meeting. Mm -hmm. oh, we had a full burial, an ashes up here, and one ashes there. Fifty pending up here. Mm -hmm. 
in the grave that you move the headstone in and pen? Which? Remember the, the Stephanie Wack, Wackster? Hmm. Stone's there. I, mean, I know the stone's stone there. there, but I actually I'll put them there. Are they there? Pieces. No, okay. they will be. All right. Right in front of it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to tell the woman they were in before they were in. <laughs> with Dan the other day uh, and I gave him the preliminary uh, authorization to do some research on uh, replacing one of his pieces of equipment, which, whichever piece, mowers, cemetery mowers, uh, he thinks is, is necessary <clears throat> because they're getting to be a little long in the tooth. What we're talking about, one of them is a 92. Like the, 90, the, the 94. 94. And the other one's in 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. That's probably the one we should replace. It's the same thing, though. Mm -hmm. It's more work. Mm -hmm. So, I have left. So that will be coming up. Yeah. yeah. Gather some. Oh, yeah, there's some votes. Yeah, votes. Probably in the 25, 30,000. Where are we with those? Oh. Uh, you went to I don't think farm science. I don't think twenty. I didn't memorize all the prices mm -hmm. on them. I didn't go this year, but I don't think more than twenty. Yeah. Because we came in at when we bought that, it was around thirteen. So it's probably going to be around eighteen. Okay. With or without four wheel drive. That would be without. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, four wheel drive is nice, but you can't mow in the stones with it because of the way it tracks. You mm -hmm. maybe then come out the same. Mm -hmm. You're not usually mowing when you need four wheel drive. Right. I mean, you know, right. if you need four wheel drive, you don't want to be in there. Right. And we still have a four wheel drive mower. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, obviously, we won't need one for a while, but it gives us an opportunity to take a good look at what's out there. Mm -hmm. And it'll have to be for it now. You know, we just, it just works so much better for us in there. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else for the cemetery? Uh, how's those roads? How's those old roads? Oh, roads look good. <laughs> I got some potholes. <laughs> oh, yeah, How'd you get potholes? Oh, you well, let's just see. <laughs> I think they look yeah. good. <laughs> Snip in Houston and Golden Willow, they look okay. Branham got some holes. Branham's got potholes. Jacoby's Bland. East Hyde and Major Hyde. Um, I never keep those two. What, what, did you address the tree that the writing center wanted you to address, or is it that I've one? I talked to. It's the. Is it that one that goes like that? Yeah. Down close to the closer to their. Property. Yeah. So they got a branch going over the fence, but and that's the other the question. The, the other branch is possible. straight. That's why I said, we, you know, should we just wait a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Mother Nature will help. That's um, on Grinnell Circle, uh, there's a tree. In the back? Huh? On the back drive, on the back section. The back street. The circle or on the, the circle at Leventhal's house? Yeah, right there, Leventhal's the, house. Dead, the dead ash standing there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's, on, it's on the ground. Part of it. Oh, yeah, okay. Part that's of that's it. the one. Is, is that on our right away? Yeah. She asked me the other day when I was I talked to her before and I told her we were going to take them down so they get yeah. the hands so You can have this other stuff out of the way now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, not in the, it's not hard to do anything. <coughs> so, uh, Larkins and Tobias, they look good. Uh, Harbison looks bad. Uh, you got halfway up, you've got a, a 
branch that's that's was. sticking out that looks like a spear. Was. Was. Okay. It's on the ground now. <clears throat> and then my tree further up, is it gone? Your tree. Yeah, the tree I had to go out and cut up and pull off the road while you were sunning on the beach last weekend or wherever you were. <laughs> I'm <driving the> train. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever. That, that, at Huddles? Yeah. No, it's still there. Let's go. First thing in the morning. Let's go. I told the, I told the sheriff, be gone. Because my man would be out there. Nobody called me on that. No, they didn't call you, they called me. <laughs> they, all they got out of you was voicemail. Well, I don't care, it was fine. It just give me a hard time. <laughs> so it would have been nice. Don't you ever take road tours yeah. anymore? Yeah, I took one this morning. I thought I knew they were there. <laughs> the road, though. It's actually his tree. In reality, it's his tree. It came out of his woods. All we had to do was put it up the road. Yeah. The trees, it's up to him. The tree, it's in his yard. It's not ours. It came out of his woods. All we take is open up the road and pick up what's across the road in our ditch. But we, we'll pick it all up. We're nice. We're uh, nice, that's right. Yeah, we're nice. <laughs> South River, you back to those stop signs that are leaning like crazy yeah, again. <laughs> Just thought I'd remind you. Kyle looks nice. Uh, North River, <coughs> what's the... He's a, he, he's supposed to be in there today. He, yeah. Uh, he, yeah. He'd already been there. He knows he cut him down. He cut, his, he cut one, but he had done something. I talked to him this morning, and Joe's got him doing you know, some other stuff, too. Yeah. But he said he, they were heading over there today. Oh, good, keep Joe happy. None, yeah. of, the, none of those phone lines are going to get in the I don't problem. think so. I don't okay. think so. Yeah, I lo located for him. He didn't understand it. I said, well, you don't want to hit one of them. Of course, I think they're deep enough where he's not going to bother them, but if I took them out with the cross to, mm -hmm. I might get it. Mm -hmm. and that was the, that's why I didn't get any closer to them. Yeah, when he's, he's going, going down fine. four inches or something. Yeah, he's just going to blow the surface, and when yeah. he's doing it, going to be fine. But I had it left in the Yeah, good. Um, Tim, you're, uh, obviously your friends threw a couple thousand pounds worth of stone in there, right? Was that was that us or was that Thompson's? Thompson? Was Andrew? In the pit. Oh, they wasn't us. That was somebody Josh that got dumped in. The, the concrete rock. Mm -hmm. Well, they can dump that. Thing. Yeah, I know. I'm just. Yeah, that's that's all for, through Josh. Mm -hmm. I go by and I see him piles of stuff there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. What can you do? I caught a guy in there with a dump truck once. I stopped and talked to him. He came through the field. He didn't bother to open the gates because he didn't have a key. Mm -hmm. I thought, so there's tire tracks, everybody and their brother says, oh, that's the way it's done yeah. here. Mm -hmm. But Swim it's, it's their property. <laughs> yeah. Swimming pool looks good. Uh, William and Mary looks good. Bryant Park. So, uh, got one hole down yeah. where that culvert, or that. It drops, yeah. yeah. And that right the culvert. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, the whole rest of the culvert. Mm -hmm. So, you'll take care of those. Well, it gets a cool patch. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I've got plenty of things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. This is off, this is off this report. And it's time for it's our dark out, isn't it? bi weekly the amendment of a permanent appropriations. This week, <laughs> Resolution 2019 43, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds to the needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize an amendment to the following permanent appropriations. The fire fund, we increased it, the property insurance by $910 to cover the cost of the new tanker being insured. And, um, and we increased the, uh, the phone line and road and bridge by $200. So the, the new tanker is the Bath Township tanker? Right. I would move adoption of this resolution. Second. Any further discussion regarding that? Um, not really, but the, the, on, on the phones, I notice we have another uh, notice of suspension of service or something for AT&T, uh -huh. your friends. Yeah. Have you had a chance to chat with them yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How was that chat? Pretty useless. <laughs> Is it? They send they, they they don't send they're supposed to be sending invoices via email to pay that bill. We do not receive those invoices. We only receive 
notices mm -hmm. of um, disconnect. Mm -hmm. I spent a considerable amount of time on the phone with AT&T, and then I moved to the option of you uh, chat with someone via online, mm -hmm. you know, and work like that way. And um, they failed miserably to accomplish what we need. And I just basically, just hung, I just hung up on them. I couldn't take any more. Because after conversation, conversation, repetitive, please, to please send me the invoice and stop just sending me notices of disconnection. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. And so then he hooked me up with the Grinnell Mill website, or um, email address. I'm like, that's not even close to what I've been talking to you about. I gotta go. So, whatever, I'm paying that, and I'll, when I, if anybody wants to take it over, they can. I, I can't seem to get what we need from them. I, this is not the first time I've been to this. I've, I've heard it. I, I went to this her, to the point it. where I said, just disconnect us. I don't care. <laughs> I couldn't get a bill from them. So we did disconnect. And we, then we decided to go ahead and go back to it again. And they're just, it's the same thing. It's, I, I beg of you, anybody, you do it. I can't do it anymore. I okay, can't do I, it. I have a solution for you. And I will give it to you tomorrow. You'll be able to dream it's, sweet it's, dreams tonight. You you money, donuts, donuts, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> you get donuts on the line. Only, only All right, anyway, I'm by, sorry, but you asked and I had to tell you. By uh, mail where it's the recipient has to sign for the mail. And then so by letters. Good luck. Okay, anything else, Ms. Glosser? No, I'm happy. <laughs> I like it. They teach you to switch from. It used to be you call them and it would take an hour before they answered you. Right? You'd be down hole. And now they answer you and they don't say anything worthwhile. I don't know which is worse. <coughs> speaking of this system. Speaking of an hour and not answering. Uh, zoning inspector's report, Richard? It's, it's brief. I uh, went to the Fall OTA oh, okay. zoning conference on Friday. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I hadn't gone for a while because they basically didn't have sessions that were relevant to what was going on here. But this time they, they had some information. Um, you know, we've been updating our zoning code and there was a session talking about updates and, and things that should be considered when, when that's taking place. Um, the other uh, talking about, again, they're, they're always emphasizing you know, uh, the legal procedures for BZA hearings. Mm -hmm. And then the final one was that the, the state now has three separate laws for nuisances. They have one for, for cars, one for buildings, and one for debris. And they're all slightly different, really? but they, they've tweaked them and they're apparently easier to yeah. go through the process than they used to be. Mm -hmm. For whatever that's, that's worth. We haven't, we haven't pursued any nuisances recently, but um, I was Glad to be up to date on that one. Um, as far as, as routine uh, zoning, I don't have anything to report. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments or uh, um, critiques or no. fashion, fashion <laughs> statements for Richard tonight? He, you are really dressed up tonight, man. Yeah, yeah, I had a quick take off the outside layer and put on a new <laughs> outside layer. You got a right, right up until. after the meeting or something? Good for the public. Yes, you do. Yeah. Somebody write that down. <laughs> Somebody write that down. Come See on. how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Brief interlude. Any new business before the board this evening? Any old business before the board this evening? Uh, we're going to have to make some. We need a new firehouse. We need something. Well, hearing nothing else, I will. During the meeting, my proclamation or how do I do it? Acclamation? <laughs> Acclamation means we have a vote. This is just something.